All right, so thanks for joining me for another little math tutorial video here. Um, I'm going to talk about the polygon family tree. As you can see, it's pictured right here. Okay, I did make this um, little diagram, but I cannot take credit for this cutesy little, um, like just the way it's laid out. I did find that on the line, as it were, and uh, just liked how it was laid out. So I copied it, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, so if you want to pause and copy it down, that's fine. Or if you want to just listen and then, you know, write it down later, that's fine too. Um, so this unit that has been so chopped up now and just disconnected, but was is on polygons, right? So you watched that quick little video on polygons, uh, when I was away. And if you remember the classification, or the um, guidelines for a polygon, it has to have like all straight sides, all the sides have to be connected, um, all those things. So you'll notice I just have a list of polygons here. Circles are not on this list because circles are not technically a polygon. Uh, but we've got triangles, which we've studied a lot of triangles and I could have another branch going off like equilateral triangle, scalene triangle, isosceles triangle. Uh, but I didn't include all that because we've moved past triangles and, and this chapter is like really focusing on quadrilaterals. Uh, but here are all the other pentagons that we know and love. This guy on the end is called an n-gon. That's just what we would like. If I had a shape that had 37 sides, it would be called a 37-gon. Okay, very uh, creative, I know. But they didn't bother to come up with names for all their shapes because honestly, have you ever even seen a shape with 37 sides? I don't think so. Um, but there you go. There's all the polygons. Um, focusing on quadrilaterals, uh, we break it down into parallelograms and non-parallelograms, right? So you did that parallelogram discovery. You found those, um, five facts about parallelograms. Don't make me quote, okay, fine, I will. Um, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Um, diagonals bisect each other and consecutive angles are supplementary. Oh, look at me go. I sure know my parallelograms. Um, so in the parallelograms category, we have rhombuses, which can be called rhombuses as pure, uh, plural, or rhombi, or uh, rhombulo, but I think I made up that last one, uh, rectangles, and then squares. So rhombuses and rectangles, everything that's true about parallelograms are also true about these two shapes, and then everything that's true about these also um, are true about like a square. Um so, yeah, a square is like the most specific shape you could have, I guess is maybe a way of saying it. Uh, and then the non-parallelograms that we have are kites um, and trapezoids. And then underneath trapezoids, we have isosceles trapezoids. Um, there are other like quadrilaterals that are not parallelograms, but they don't like technically have a name, like just a four-sided shape that's not a parallelogram, but also fit in that category but it doesn't have a name, so why would I list it? Um, so yeah, if I had a question for you, like give all the possible names for this shape, let's say it was a rectangle, then you would have to say, okay, well that's a rectangle, and that's a parallelogram, and that's a quadrilateral, and that's a polygon. Like those are all the possible names for that shape. So um, any, any category it falls under would be included, if that makes sense. Like, if I gave you an isosceles trapezoid and I was like, give me all the possible names for the shape, you would say, all right, that's an isosceles trapezoid, also a trapezoid, um, quadrilateral, and a polygon. So, there you go. There's your polygon family tree. Thanks for watching.